Hi everyone, my name is Fabrizio and today I'm going to present some of our preliminary results on uh, quantifying changes in daily sea level distributions from tight gauges records. And this is work in collaboration with Andrew and Laura in NYU Current. So this is an outline of the talk. I'm gonna go very briefly through introduction and motivations, showing some of what we know in terms of global mean sea level rise and regional sea level rise. And then I will make the case that there is still some unanswered question when we're trying to quantify trends in sea level rise. Mainly, how are distributions of sea level change? To answer this question, I will present a methodology that will allow to quantify trends in the full distribution of sea level and apply such methodology to tight gauge state. And then I will jump to conclusions, ongoing and future work. So, it is well known that the global mean sea level has been rising since the last century. And you can see this from this plot in Frederick et al. 2020, where on the x-axis you have time going from 1900 till present time, and on the y-axis you have global mean sea level. Now I would like you to focus on the blue uh, curve that show the observed reconstructed um, global mean sea level. It has been going up with an average rate of 1.35 millimeter per year. It kind of um, reached a plateau in the 60s and 70s, and then it has been accelerating ever since. Now, once we go from studying global mean sea level to regional sea level rise, we see that performing attribution or investigating regional sea level rise is way more complex than actually studying global mean sea level. The reason is that there are a lot of distinct regional features and distinct regional patterns coming from local variability. Local variability in winds, um, local variability in changes in salinity, non-uniform ocean warming, and also modes of variability. In general, um, whether for global or regional attribution, we know that uh, sea level is going up in most places. Um, uh, but usually when we quantify such trends, we look at uh, methodologies such as linear regression. So we quantify trends in the mean sea level by ignoring changes in higher moment statistics. So there is an unanswered question in this study, which is how is the full sea level distribution changing in the observational record? And this is what we're going to try to um, actually answer uh, and quantify in this work. So let me try to um, uh, present a methodology that was first introduced to the climate um, community by Karen McKinnon in a JGR paper of 2016. Given a time series, it works in two steps. First of all, we're going to estimate changes in all quantiles and estimate the statistical significance of such changes. And then we're going to um, link such changes in percentiles and in quantiles to changes in the moments of a, of a distribution. So to give you an example, this is the tight cage in San Francisco. So this is sea level, the relative sea level in, in, in San Francisco from 1900 to 2018. And I'm focusing on December, January, and February, so winter season, and the temporal resolution are daily data. So as you can see, the sea level has been going up. As a first step, we're going to quantify trends in different quantiles from 0.01 quantile to the median to 0.99 quantile. For each one of these trends, we are also going to quantify the statistical significance um, of, our, uh, of our procedure by using block bootstrapping procedure. And I'm happy to talk about it in the conference. This will allow also, this will, will also allow to quantify um, confidence bounds of, uh, of, uh, of, of these logs. So for a given time series, we're going to end up with quantification of slopes for each quantile of the distribution. As you can see here, the 0.2 quantile has been going up in San Francisco of 1.8 millimeter per year, which is less than what the, the, the median of the distribution has been changing, which is 1.9 millimeter per year. Now, we can project some changes in slopes for each quantile to, change, to, to, uh, to changes in, uh, in basis function, which can be related to changes in moments. So 
we need a, cho a choice of basis function. And it's been shown that a suitable choice for such basis function are Legend polynomials. Well, here you see quantiles and here values of the Legend polynomial. For example, the first polynomial, will, if we apply the first polynomial to all quantiles of the distribution, the end result will be to shift the distribution of a constant value. So to shift the distribution of a, with, to a different mean value, but uh, without but leaving intact all the other um, uh, distributional moments. If you do so for the second polynomial, uh, we're going to change the variance of the distribution. If you apply the third polynomial, we're going to change the skewness of the distribution. If you look at uh, the fourth polynomial, we're going to change the kurtosis of the distribution. And all these um, uh, bases are actually orthogonal to each other. So we're going to quantify changes in moments that are independent to each other. So you can see from this plot that we can actually reconstruct some changes in quantized logs by simply looking at projection on the legend basis. And if we go back to our first example with San Francisco, it is the uh, relative sea level uh, in San Francisco in winter season. We can quantify the different quantized logs with a certain confidence bounds for each one of them. And then we can relate such changes in quantized logs to changes in the different distributional modes, changes in the mean, variance, skewness, and quartosis. The main changes in San Francisco has been changing in the mean with a, um, a trend of 1.92 millimeter per year, which has been significant under our block bootstrapping procedure. And um, changes in violence, skewness, and quartosis are way smaller and not significant. And um, um, one thing I forgot to say is that we apply our block bootstrapping procedure also when we do the projection onto Legend basis. So given these, we can actually quantify if changes in moments are actually significant or not significant. So let's apply this methodology to tight gauge data. Uh, we're going to consider the period from 1970 to 2017. And for each tight cage, we are going to remove data with more than 20% corrupted days. And we're going to estimate such uh, trends um, by looking at different seasons. So from winter season to summer season. Here we're in just going to present results in winter, so December, January, February, and summer, June, July, August, but we're also looking at other uh, seasonal change. So these are the changes in the mean, so the first moment. Um, first thing that you, you sh I should say is that whenever you see an X, it means that um, that change in the, in the in the first moment um, is not significant, uh, given our uh, block bootstrapping um, uh, significant test. Another thing is that the majority of the tight gauge um, actually show um, a statistically significant change in the mean of the distribution. 84% of the tight gauge is for winter and 92% for summer. The globally average trend for the statistically significant changes in winter is of 2.12 millimeter per year. And in summer, it's slightly higher, 2.25 millimeter per year. And the major changes um, actually from summer to winter uh, come from changes um, in, the, in the Eastern part of US, at least qualitative, and we are working on quantifying better such changes. So given our methodology, we can actually look at changes in different moments of the distribution. So these are changes in the second moment. The first thing that you should see is that um, the values of such changes in millimeter per year are actually quite smaller than the one in the mean. So these are changes in the mean. They go from minus five to five millimeter per year. These are changes in the variance that go from minus two to two millimeter per year. Another thing that you should see is that the majority of such changes are actually not statistically significant for both seasons. Just 7% of the tight, gauge, tight gauges have a statistically significant change in the second moment of the distribution. And just 12% of the tight gauges show a statistically significant change in the, in the, in the, in the, in the second moment in, in, in summer season. 
However, and we're going to go, uh, we're, I'm going to talk about this um, in the last part of the of the slides uh, of, the, of the presentation. Some of the type gauges um, can achieve statistically significant changes in uh, in different moments, uh, dependent on the distribution you are looking at. For example, this island in DJF has no statistically significant change in variance, but it has such statistically significant change in sample. So the, the same is true for students, for which we, we see uh, very few type gauges with statistically significant changes in both winter and summer, and for kurtosis, for which we see very few type gauges with statistically significant changes, and we also see very small values of uh, such changes themselves. So our first conclusion is that the main changes in sea level come in different, in different type gauges, come from simple shift in the mean of the distribution. And now we can quantify it using this, this methodology. For example, in New York, you can consider the tight gauge going from 1930 to 2018. You can actually plot the result here. You can see, for example, the, the histogram of the first 20 years from 1930 to 1950, and the histogram of this, um, the last 20 years from 1998 to 2018. And you can see by eye that actually we are simply shifting the distribution. And this has major consequence actually in sea level rise attribution because as you can see, the extreme, what was an extreme sea level rise in New York in the 30s is actually the mean of the distribution uh, in the last 20 years. However, locally, we can see that some of these tight gauges can start showing changes in higher moments. And quantifying some changes may be actually important for local um, sea level attribution or for local uh, sea level extremes attribution. One of these examples, and we're working right now on looking the other examples, come from uh, a tight gauge in, in Japan, in a Japanese island, which is called Ishigaki, um, which for summer season, so June, July, August, uh, show actually changes, not just in the mean, which is of 2.23 millimeter per year, but actually also significant changes in the variance of the distribution, 1.56 millimeter per year. And uh, we actually verified that such changes are, um, are statistically significant using our block bootstrapping uh, methodology. And you can actually visualize such changes in distribution by looking at the, uh, at the, the first distribution in blue that goes from 1970 to 1990 uh, to the last 20 years of the distribution, which is going from 1998 to 2018, where you can really see that we have been shifting the mean in such tight gauge, and also the variance is increasing too. So let me jump to some preliminary conclusions. Um, we know that the sea level distribution are changing and this, the change in the mean is, all, is, is show positive trends in most locations. This is known. Um, what we add to this information is that these trends in sea levels are linked mainly to a shift in the full distribution. So change in the mean rather than changes in higher moments. This is true on average, but we see that for some tight cages locally, um, we start seeing some changes in higher moment statistics that are interesting to quantify, especially for local sea level attribution. Now, for ongoing and future work is related on um, studying such distributional changes in climate models, where we can actually look at how distribution sea level are changing um, using different warming scenarios. On top of that, uh, the results I showed you um, are actually uh, on daily mean statistics. But one of our collaborators, Jian Jun, actually um, made the interesting point uh, that we may underestimate the daily mean peak hourly surge as well as coastal risks. Um, an example comes from the hurricane sand induced uh, surge at New York City, which was a little more than one meter for daily mean. But if we look at peak hourly mean, it was almost three to four meters. So it will be interesting to see in the future how such changes in, uh, in, uh, in, in distribution 
actually are related to our choice of temporal resolution. And with this, I will stop and uh, thank you all for your attention.